Hey guys, welcome to another episode in the deep playthrough of Train to Rismo 7. We will be continuing a circuit experience. I think the last one of all the circuits that are currently unlocked, which are not that many, one in America, three in Europe, already did this one, Lago Maggiore, Grand Hatch and Goodwood, and this was the, some kind of an oval, got the name, Northern Isle Speedway. Super annoying uh, circuit experience, car drifting a lot, an old um, Corvette Stingray. We are now doing the last one in Asia, which is the BB Raceway, Broad Beam Raceway. And here we go. We will be driving, I don't know, is that a Mazda or a Hyundai or something? It's a Mazda. Here we go. Alright, let's start with the first section. It's like a 90 degree angle, should not be that hard, I hope. Here we go. No more kidding around. Alright, I have no idea where to uh, break. Let's do the 50 meter board. Nope. That was too late. Alright, let's do the 100 meter. Now a little bit later. Oh shit, I need to um, severely... Uh, totally forgot to shift down. Alright, here we go. You need the, those little arrows, that's where we need to break over here. Shit, I shifted down too much. I need to only go to third. Maybe I can even leave it in fourth, I don't know. Alright, here we go. No more kidding around. that I need to work each day. I really would like to spend so much more time on this game. Alright, that was it. So we keep it in fourth. Almost there. So this one I think I was on the gas a little bit too late. Ah, it was enough. Very nice. But man, I'm so bummed out. The time is so scarce. But it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, sector 2. Alright, so we have a wide sweeping left-hander. Then I think a little kink to the right, but it's mostly flat out. And then an even wider left-hander. So here we go. Wonder do we need to lift? Nope. Right, let's see. Yeah, we can just go straight through there. Yeah, this is just all flat out it seems. That was pretty easy. Right, then this whole track is pretty easy as well, I guess. Unless the time is super strict, I don't know. The only difficult corner is that first one, I would say. For the rest it's just, I think, Full throttle. Oh. All right, nice. 
That was a really easy one for a change. Let's quickly watch the real re replay. Without all kinds of on-screen distractions. Pretty fun track, by the way. Really short. But at least it's a little bit more diverse than just an oval. Oval racing, I really, I don't understand. I do understand that it's fun for spectators because you can basically see the cars full time instead of only seeing them pass by uh, your specific section where you are. You can overlook like the whole track, but man, it's also super boring compared to um, a regular circuit which has like left and right handers in varying degrees with some elevation thrown into the mix, etc. All right, so that uh, basically covers all the surf experience now available. So I think there's only one thing to do. And that is basically uh, menu books. But there are also per I don't understand the campaign mode in this game. Is is that attached to the uh, past results Sunday Cup? I don't even remember driving this in seconds. Are there like races? I didn't even drive there yet. Yet, so I have no idea why there's a past result. I never drove here, at least not that I can remember. Ah, maybe it was all at the start at the first menu book, and I was not really paying attention to the circuits. But yeah, okay, I must have been because here it says past results zero or none. But there are also races attached to these locations themselves. But isn't there just like a main campaign? menu where you can enter the races instead of going to the circuits first and then selecting a race It'd otherwise be a bit weird anyways let's leave those races for what they are now and first let's um, check the menu books all right here we go collection european classic compacts um, high speed ring in Japan. I think that may be a new track. Yeah, that will be unlocked. Collection, we have to collect um, a Fiat 500, a Mini Cooper S65 and a Volkswagen 1200. Here we go. My plan this time around is for you to collect classic European compact cars. All three cars were built in Europe in the 60s and remain much loved to this day. Part of their charm is their distinctive interiors, which are totally different to the high-tech cars of today. Good luck, Iber. I'll be rooting for you. I guess but that will immediately um, complete the menu book I mean how hard is this all right I will buy it buy the next one I guess if it's here by the way this Toyota is pretty cool looks a bit like the Toyota 2000 GT or something from the James Bond uh, that, that car that is now invaluable or super valuable but then this looks like the smaller version but it has like the same uh, front ends a little bit similar front ends anyways um, I have no idea Oh, the Stratos, pretty cool as well. Yeah, I have 
no clue where to get the mini and the beetle. Ah, yeah, ah here they are. I'm just overlooking them. I'm just an idiot. Kirby. I am going to play in the uh, livery editor and make this a Herbie, but we'll do that later. Um, Mini Cooper, more expensive than the other two. Here we go. Sixty-four HP. Still quite a lot for such a small. That's one uh, HP per ton. Ah, new. We have new uh, circuits, so we can do new circuit experiences. I like those actually secretly the most up until now. Your new car has been added to your garage. Do you want to change to it? Nope. All right, let's do some circuit experiences. Screw the menu books. All right, Northern Al Watkins Glen, that's a new one. Don't really know this one. All right, um, another boring group three car. I really, I like road cars so much better than these boring uh, group B cars, or three, whatever it is, four or two. All right, first part, simple uh, right-hander. At least, it looks quite simple. I'm not even sure what car this is. Ah, it's a Bentley, I guess. No, right? Oh, shit! I um, accidentally pressed the clutch pedal. I think it is a Bentley. Never saw this one. But yeah, then again... I am totally... I'm interested in modern cars. They're so soulless. I find them soulless. But the question is, is it a Bentley? I cannot really read it in the back. Whatever, maybe it says something here. Ah, it's a Genesis, it's not a, it's I think that's a Honda, right? Or all oh, right, for a Honda it looks pretty cool, but um, somehow I was I thought that the emblem uh, looked like uh, a Bentley emblem, but that must have been the Genesis emblem or something. I'm just an idiot. Let's uh, conclude that. All right, this is a much more trickier section. So straight on, then a chicane. Then right, left, right. Oh! <laughs> that was my bad. I will break 200 marker. Well before. All right, I think I could go way quicker through there. Shifting gears in this thing. Nope, totally screwed up that last one. Right, here we go. No more kidding around. I 
and damn it, somehow I stepped on the brake without real reason. Settle the car. Now you see, I don't even need to break here, I can just lift off.
game is he's a tight corner. Long and tight. That was expected. I screwed up the first long corner. up on that uh, curb. It's a really tricky curb on that last corner. It was a pretty fun uh, attempt with a lot of sliding around. And I think it was still quite quickly, so maybe it would have been a gold. Guys, I have to end this episode because I'm over the 25 minute marker. I need to keep the file sizes uh, smaller because of YouTube HDR processing. We'll continue in the next episode. Hope to see you there. Hope you enjoyed this one. For the meantime, don't forget, always do keep on gaming. Later.